I'm here in Forest Grove next to the Paul of Evo, Oregon Evo suspension, and he's been working on the Trans Alp. He's had it for the last two days. And the idea here was, this is not the world's most expensive adventure bike. So we, I asked him to kind of go through and in a budget friendly way, maximize its capabilities and really I think shore up one of the biggest weak points of this bike being that stock suspension and I don't even think it's that bad but for riding aggressively it is so um Paul's had the bike for a couple days and he's just going to kind of give us a quick overview of what it is that he did to it so being a budget friendly bike we didn't want to basically double the cost of the bike by putting expensive suspension components on it we wanted to work with what we have that's a common misconception that a lot of people don't understand is that stock suspension on most bikes can be worked on and greatly improved at a fraction of the cost of the expensive aftermarket components. First thing we did, add springs for uh, the rider weight. So stock spring versus, you know, much heavier spring front and rear. So the other thing we did to improve the performance is inside of the fork and the shock, there's valving, which effectively are pressure springs and we manipulate those pressure springs to give different performance at what would be considered different speeds. When you hear suspension guys talk about speeds, we aren't talking about how fast you're riding, we're talking about the shaft speed. That could be hitting a fast pothole or slow undulations, and that's what we're manipulating internally to better handle basically the terrain. So out here in the Pacific Northwest, for example, we have a lot of remote backcountry roads, and our roads are far worse than back roads in Western Europe. So that's where, you know, we really need to match the bike to the terrain to the rider. So what improvements am I gonna see when I go out and ride this thing? What is gonna feel different? First and foremost, it's gonna feel a little more plush while staying higher in the stroke. It's not just gonna blow through that stroke, bottoming or feeling harsh. So the valving helps with the plushness and some of the dampening where the heavier springs actually they help hold up the bike and the rider. So what do you recommend if someone wants to improve their suspension without spending a bazillion dollars on say a full tractive, like you said, or you, know, you can go buy a shock from Turretech, which is the same thing, or you know, race tech or whatever. What's the best way to go about it? And how do they find someone that can do this work? As with all things, I always recommend people go to their local suspension tuner because they're there to support you day and night, as well as they'll know the specific terrain you're riding and they can give you the best recommendations for what works for you, your budget, and your bike. First and foremost, springing the bike for your weight, that is your number one best money spent. The dampening improvements just help with your comfort or confidence. Some of the dampening improvements we do to various bikes, such as this one, really will help the performance in that, um, you know, it prevents the bike from feeling pogo sticky, it also can help match the dampening to the spring. So for example, a lot of these adventure bikes and dual sports come very under dampened. So when you start adding heavier springs, especially in the rebound, which is how fast that shock or fork comes out, the rebound dampening just doesn't keep up. So that's where you get that pogo sticky feel. So we're trying to match everything, balance everything, and then it works in perfect harmony. Nice, dude. Well, I'm unbelievably excited to get out and test ride this now i sat on it already it's already much stiffer and taller it feels taller already you were even saying i might get some of that that very important precious ground clearance back that uh, people are concerned about on this bike so if people want to come to you how do they find you if you're local or semi-local or you said people can even like ship you stuff right people can ship me their stuff they can drop stuff off you can find me on facebook or instagram at evo oregon two o's in there there it is and i'll put a link in the description for you Oh, I'm unbelievably excited to say that I think the Transalp build is done. So today we're going to go out and test the last couple mods I did. Those mods being the suspension. I don't know if you can tell, but it's actually sitting higher. And the Viridian Cruise Control, which I've already tested and works great, but I haven't shown you guys yet. So we're going to head out and do, I don't even know where I'm going today, but I know I'm going uh, to the woods at least. It's the first nice day. Look at this. The first day I haven't had to wear base layers in months so i'm hoping i don't regret that decision but it's supposed to be almost 60 degrees today so let's roll out i also added pivot pegs today look at that so the cruise control operation couldn't be simpler we're cruising along here at let's try 55. you just hit the set button when you're at the speed you want and look ma no hands 
it just keeps up that speed you can actually shift using the quick shifter if you want and it keeps the speed I just shifted I don't know if you could tell uh, you can pull the clutch in and it won't go off which I wouldn't recommend you can accelerate if you need to and that kills it so any any throttle input kills it and also using the brake front or rear shuts it off that's the wire you have to tap when you install it so it's a very simple elegant system I like that this is a kind of an unobtrusive this is the soft touch switch you can also get a toggle switch which I thought was ugly so I went with this one um, install however is not simple I will say it was very frustrating and that's not because of anything Viridian did it's because of Honda and the way this bike is designed so I've been kind of downplaying the whole it's hard to work on aspect just because I didn't think it was as big a deal to get to certain things but I had to go in take all the fairings off and lift the tank to uh, put this cruise control in and that's what you have to do to change the air filter I don't think I realized it was that involved so yeah this bike is a pain in the ass to work on to the point where I actively despise working on it now and I would rather not take all the fairings and everything off again particularly with my crash bars which don't allow for removal of the side fairings without loosening them so everything's just complicated so install sucks on this bike but again that's not Viridian's fault that's Honda's fault it's the kind of thing that it might be worth paying a mechanic to do if you're just not comfortable pulling all the fairings off and keeping track of all your fasteners and bolts and uh and rivets and going in and pulling out wiring and i mean i was on the edge of my comfort level honestly i was at one point ready to give up i just kept running into roadblocks and there's these two weird hidden bolts behind the gas tank that i just couldn't get a wrench on and i was just like i'm done and i reached out to e and big rock moto and i was like dude i think you undersold how difficult this is and he's like nah dude you can do it just keep going and i did so he talked me off the ledge but not my favorite install ever it's just way too involved for what it is so if you don't want to do wiring stuff a throttle lock is also an option and it takes 15 minutes to install but this is elegant looks factory works incredibly well you know how's all the bells and whistles and features that that you're looking for and it's basically the same as the factory cruise except it doesn't say it on the screen that's about the only thing the only difference between this and bikes with factory crews I've had. Well, I'm starting to think today's quest might be short-lived, or we may have to go around the backside, because there's a lot more snow already than I was expecting, and we have not started going up yet, really. By myself, two dudes just went by going the other direction. My guess is they got turned around up here. It's okay. We can go around the backside. It's still fun. Yeah, you see this? You see this right here? This is probably me turning around, because I don't want to deal with turning around. Um, in the snow. Yeah. Okay. Normally I would keep going. Well, it doesn't look too bad. Hold on. Let's see. I just think it's going to get worse and it's not worth it today when the alternative road is right down there. <sighs> let's see. Yeah. I can feel the ass in sliding already. Not fabulous. Yeah. Nah, I think we're done. I think we're done. Today's not the day. I'm not feeling it today. Oh, it's ice right there. I almost slipped and fell. Do not want to pick this bike up off the ground, dude. Okay. I'm not like, I'm not liking that. I'm not liking the feeling I'm getting right now. This feels like we're going downhill in a way that I don't want to. Those guys, they tried to warn me, and I did not pay attention. Oop, yeah, there's ice on the road right there. I can feel it. Okay, damn it. It's fine. We're going to go around the backside. We can still test the suspension. So let's talk about gear real quick. Showy Hornet X2 helmet, which I'm still trying to get the mic setup worked out in, but it's getting closer, I feel like. I'm actually running two Insta360 Ace Pros right now because I'm in the final stages of my review video. These are the cameras I've tested the longest. I've had this for like a month and a half. Made a bunch of videos with it. Obviously the MSR Explorer gear, jacket and pants. These are the Tourmaster, I think the Highline gloves. I really like these gloves. They're very supple and thin feeling, but super warm. So it's a really interesting combination for a, for a winter glove, honestly. I've been wearing them in really crappy temperatures. And then the Corazol boots, as always, Alpine Stars. And this is that MSR vest, which I'm not a vest guy, but I wanted to give one a shot because, well, I've never actually done it. And it's a hydration pack, but I like the idea, so I put my sunglasses in this pocket of it kind of being like a tank bag that I take between bikes. Like, I don't plan on loading it up with tools. I don't understand why people do that because that's a lot of weight on your body. But in terms of a sort of balanced way to do hydration and also just have stuff readily accessible... I don't hate that idea. Let's hit a few bumps and see how the suspension does. Still on the old Trail Max Raids, so we're not going to go crazy in the mud and stuff just because they aren't the best tires for that, but they'll be great when this stuff dries out in a month or so, hopefully. Hopefully it dries out. Not hopefully they'll be good. I think they'll be good. 
Oh man, this is a big difference. I can already tell. Oh yeah. So much uh, more resistant to bottoming already. That was the big thing with this stock suspension. It's just really street tuned. So I didn't spend a bunch of money. Paul did a new spring and he went in and reworked the internals. Um, and he actually added, so this only had like a, a spring and one fork. So he went in and put in uh, some springs from uh, from, X, from a 300L that he just had. So that worked really well to stiffen up the front, which I like because that's what hits the bumps. Yeah, this is much more comparable to the 790. I mean, based on the little bit of time I have on it. Still not adjustable, so it's set up for me, but the only adjustment I have is preload front and rear, which is fine for like adjusting for luggage and stuff, but not gonna give you the fine tuning adjustability to like, one, just set it up for you specifically, and two, adapt to changing terrain necessarily. See what I said I was gonna not do with the snow and here we are doing the snow. Yeah, I mean, that's the big thing is it's not bottoming to where I feel like it's, and then rebounding so hard that I don't have any traction. Man, I'm just, I'm super tired of winter this year. I don't know what it is. Normally I embrace the stock and just get out in the cold and it is what it is. But this year, I just got tired of being cold, man. I'm just tired of dealing with it and I don't want to anymore. I'm ready for spring. So, and days like this help because they get, show me that hope is around the corner. But then last time we got days like this, we had a massive snowstorm like for a week after. So I, we're getting closer. It's March now. And usually March is when I start camping and stuff again. It's a little chilly, which is good because it's still that shoulder season that we talked about on the podcast where, you know, you need a little bit more gear because it's colder, but you know, your beer stays cold and the campfire is fun because you need it. And the fire bands aren't on yet and all of that stuff that I enjoy about shoulder season camping. Oh man, I got to show you this hill that scared the shit out of me the first time I came up here on my Africa Twin. Just the dumb things I used to be afraid of. And I don't point that out to make people that are afraid of those things feel dumb. Fear is a normal human emotion. Hold on, I'm in the wrong gear. This is the hill right here. It's not even a hill. We're barely even going up. I'm just going to take it easy and slow, but I point it out because I want you to see your future potentially, like what growth can look like if you persevere and continue to push your comfort zone just slightly here and there. Yeah. Why am I not taking pictures in the snow up here? What are you, are you some kind of content creator or an idiot? Yeah, this hill, this was the hill that scared me right here. I was afraid of it. Um, it's like 25 feet high on a very gentle slope. So I'm impressed by the suspension. I think not everyone thinks about suspension and it's maybe not necessary for everybody. Like I'm almost twice the weight of the person that they designed these bikes for. So I probably need a suspension upgrade on every motorcycle. Now I've only done it a couple times and I've done fine. Just know that you're gonna have a squishier suspension and deal with more bottoming issues and you're gonna have more sag, stuff like that. But if you can afford it, there's two ways to do it. So Paul did it the inexpensive way. You know, it's, it's less than $1,000, which is a lot of money, especially on a bike that you spent five or $6,000 on. But you can go out and spend $25, $3,500 on like a full tractive or race tech setup. All he did was tweak the internals, add some new springs and spring the rear for my weight. And you can have that done by any suspension guy inexpensively and it will transform your bike, make it perfect for you. And then you, then you have that person as a resource to like help you do tweaks and stuff. I just sold my 450L to Duck Fan and I was like, email Paul and tell him how to change the setup that he put for me that sort of work for you because Duck Fan weighs less than me. He just like told him what to do, back off some preload and blah, blah, blah. He knows the exact setup and he knew how to tweak it. So that's a cool resource to have. So something to look into. It's not something that I ever really thought about much when I first got started, but it is nice to have a bike that is set up for you. Okay, see this? I have to ride through actual snow. Seriously not. I should bring my, I should bring the runner out here. I haven't had it in the snow yet. This would be a great test because there's nothing here that bothers me. Just be snow, not ice. If this is slush, I literally don't care. But if it's ice, I definitely care. I definitely care. Noticeable difference in the suspension. I would say it is, I have a lot more confidence going faster over bumps and stuff, not worrying about the front diving and slamming. And it's going to be less comfortable on the street, but I feel like that's a small price to pay for what we're trying to accomplish here, which is making this budget-friendly bike a little bit more capable without breaking the bank, without spending as much as a more expensive bike would have cost in the first place. Well, this is uh, a lot clearer than last time I was up here. It's almost like they cut it clear. I wonder if there's a name for that, where they cut it clear, where they just clear it by cutting some kind of clear 
uh, cut technique. I don't. There's probably a word. It's escaping me. Oh, here's some here's some bumpy grumpy stuff. Yeah, this is all logging company land. It's a Friday. I'm kind of surprised they're not working, especially with the weather being good for the first time in weeks. You gotta be careful, guys. When you're in the woods, you gotta watch out for cats because they can sneak up on you. Big yellow cats will take you out before you even know what hit you. Actually, I joke, but those things swing around the back end. You don't see it coming. You're in trouble. Yeah, okay, out of the snow. Good, 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 good. That's what I like to see. Wow, what a gorgeous view. What a gorgeous view. So anyway, uh, short ride today. Like I said, just a test ride to get a sense of the last two or three mods. Pivot peg's good. Paul suspension, good. Cruise control works great. So I think this thing is pretty much done for now and I'm excited to get out and actually ride it because the weather hopefully is more of this and less of that white stuff we saw up there. But affiliate links to all the gear on the bike and that I'm wearing in the description. And uh, thank you to my channel members and patrons for making content like this possible. Channel members and patrons get early access to videos, they get behind the scenes sneak peeks, they get merchandise discounts, they get other great perks, stickers, things like that. And it only costs a dollar a month to join on Patreon or less if you sign up for a year or two books here on YouTube. Also, if you want to support the channel without committing to a monthly fee, which, hey, I get, you can use my links to Rocky Mountain, Revzilla, Amazon, Modal Camp Nerd, and Giant Loop. And if you use that link, put a cookie in your browser, and then anything you buy, doesn't matter if you clicked on my link to get there or not, I'll get a small commission for you. Support the channel, cost you no extra, everybody wins. And those companies like me more and continue to support me because they see that I am driving sales their way. That is capitalism. But for now, and as always, I just want to say thank you very much for watching. I appreciate you and please do not forget to be excellent to each other. Oh, thank you.